So a new and emerging field within medicine is here. And uh, some people call it regenerative medicine. Some people call it stem cell treatment, stem cell therapy, stem cell medicine. And those terms are unfortunately used a little loosely right now. So to me at least, regenerative medicine includes this field of medicine where we can hopefully see some regeneration of tissue, regeneration of cells, and uh, reorganization of those cells into functional tissues. Stem cell treatment really should refer to just stem cells. And I think that's where we're seeing a little uh, uh, bit of a disconnect. People are using the word stem cell treatment very loosely and they're using it inappropriately and into some cases uh, maybe even fraudulently where they're doing treatments and calling them stem cell treatments when in fact their treatments contain no stem cells or at least no living stem cells. That is a field that is absolutely going to be the future of probably pain management and medicine in general. If we can reverse conditions and we can reverse diseases and we can regenerate tissues that have been damaged then a lot of the current treatments are no longer going to be needed. You know, it's amazing stuff. We do that with a combination of both stem cells, which can include autologous, which means stem cells from the patient's own body, and non-autologous, which means patients from, uh, or cells from, that are not from that same patient. And we can use other growth factors and other cell mediators and cell signaling agents. We can use different uh, factors that form chains or, or almost structures uh, that they can build on. All of those things encompass regenerative medicine. So it's not just one treatment, it's a com combination of different treatments. We have used those different technologies for a variety of different conditions. Uh, everything from musculoskeletal, so patients who have had hip problems, knee problems, ankle problems, foot problems like plantar fasciitis, shoulder problems, elbow problems, you know, back problems, um, all the way up to spinal issues where we've uh, used stem cells for patients who have nerve root damage, uh, patients who have had strokes uh, for their spine, patients who have had disc problems where we've been able to inject various products in the disc themselves. We have also used stem cells for neurodegenerative conditions such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, central stroke. Um, and um, so far, we have seen uh, a little bit of everything. We've seen patients who have not had a response, and we've seen patients who have exceeded our expectations. Uh, we, had, we had a few patients who had um, autoimmune disorders, and with a combination of, of directed stem cells into the various joints that were affected, as well as uh, IV stem cells. We, in combination with other therapies, uh, we've had patients who have had complete remission of those autoimmune disorders. We've had patients who have had remission of their multiple sclerosis. We've had patients who have had uh, severe knee, hip, you know, other joint uh, degenerative conditions that have needed surgery and were on the schedule for surgery, joint replacement surgery, who have completely foregone joint replacement surgery because they don't need it anymore. So we've seen a little of everything. I think it's pretty early on where we can't make any claims that, uh, that it helps you know, this much or it helps in these many patients. Um, my biggest uh, sort of uh, piece of advice to physicians and patients who are watching uh, is to know that uh, one, it can be helpful, but at the same time, it could be a complete waste of time. Uh, two, to research who they're going to for treatment uh, there are a lot of fly-by-night people out there uh, and uh, I would advise you to not go to those fly-by-night people because they may not be either injecting the right product or injecting in the right area. And uh, third, uh, uh, be careful of a lot of clinics who claim to be using stem cells who are not using any stem cells at all. It, it, it obviously is you know, not going to work as well. So far, insurance companies have reimbursed for stem cells um, in conjunction with various leukemias, but uh, they haven't really reimbursed at all for musculoskeletal uh, or intrathecal or neurodegenerative uh, applications. I hope they do. 
From the standpoint, there are many patients who can benefit from that. Right now, the patients had to pay cash for you know, stem cell or regenerative medicine treatments. It behooves the insurance company to really look at the business model because I hope they care about patient care, but we definitely know they care about the business model. And in many situations, I can tell you, you know, for these joint replacement surgeries that, we've, uh, that were supposed to take place, that we were able to avoid with stem cell treatments, uh, my gosh, we probably saved the insurance company 90% if they had covered it, obviously, from what they would have paid for that joint replacement surgery. So think about that. I mean, from a business standpoint, it makes no sense not to cover it. Now, the flip side, here's where the Pandora's box comes in. When insurance companies cover it, what are they covering? Are they covering autologous stem cells? Are they covering bone marrow-derived stem cells? Are they covering stromovascular fraction or, or fat-derived stem cells? Are they covering non-autologous stem cells? Are they covering growth factors? Are they covering interventional pain physicians? Are they covering non-interventional pain physicians? Are they covering chiropractors who claim to be doing stem cells but are not? Because they're not even allowed to inject people, so they have to hire random doctors to do random things. Well, that's the problem. Once you start saying this is approved, you start seeing a lot of people taking advantage of it. And I think that for right now, that's one of the major concerns that the insurance companies have, is what are the right treatments? What are the right combinations of treatments? Who are the right people to do these treatments? Hopefully, ultimately, I think it will be covered eventually when they can sort through that sort of uh, muddied water. Uh, but, but for right now, to my knowledge, I don't know any insurance companies that are covering it for you know, pain management or musculoskeletal or neurodegenerative issues.